You guys got to see how this thing turns out. You guys might already know this, but in case you don't, we've been getting into building custom carved and power carved tables. We've built a couple already. Ryan built one, I built one, but now we had a piece of artwork that was round and I wanted to do something special with this. So we decided to build a small end table. Everything we're using today will have links in the description below so you can go check it out. Let's get into it. This is a piece of redwood that we glued up probably over a month ago and it's just been sitting in the cave which is where all our material is. The problem is is that this is only about 18 and a half inches wide and because our artwork is in a perfect circle that's as big as we could do it. So we decided to just go ahead and make a little end table out of it. So I surfaced this thing down top and bottom. It's important when you surface a piece of wood that you do the entire thing that way you can get an idea of which side is best and which side you want to make your sign out of. Now there's a bunch of different ways to cut shapes. Dad's favorite way is to use a router and a template guide and we had this 18 inch circle template just kind of laying around from some other project and I don't even know what it's from but when you're doing this what you want to do is you want to cut from the back side of your sign or your table, whatever you're going to do. The way that the template attaches to the board is with these four little screws that just kind of barely poke into the wood. But the last thing you want is a finished project with four little holes in it. This honestly is probably the easiest way to cut shapes, but you are somewhat limited. Because the pattern itself is three quarter inch MDF and then our material is two by, we couldn't cut all the way through. So what dad did is he went through twice to get as deep as we could and then we finished it up with the bandsaw and the freestanding disc sander. If you have our base plate for your router, remember that it doesn't accept template guides. It has to be specially cut for that. So make sure even if you change a base plate out that you keep your old one so you can install a template guide if you're going to do something like this. For the layout, we used our inkjet transfer process, and we have an entire video dedicated just to showing you how to do this. I will leave a little card up here in the corner, and I'll also put a link in the description below. This is a whole process in and of itself, and to be honest, it's like my least favorite process but it's definitely the best. It takes a little while, kind of takes some uh, finagling, takes a little practice, but man, as long as you can print something out, you can get whatever you want on the board. So it really, really does work well. One thing you want to make sure of, especially with a round piece of wood, is that it's measured and centered right. So I measured and I made marks on all four sides to make sure that it was as centered as it possibly could be. And I gotta say, I think I did a pretty good job centering this thing. So we are focused on a campaign this year, guys, to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could do us a favor, if you find value in what we're doing, if you really like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button and that like button. That would really help us out, and we appreciate it. The first bit I used was a profile bit at 3 16ths of an inch deep. Now, because this is a pretty good sized piece of artwork, it was 18 inches round, there was really no sharp fine points that I had to use our fine detail bit, which is the carving liner, which is really good for this because this redwood was kind of a pain to carve. Redwood is like hit and miss. Sometimes you get redwood that carves like butter. Sometimes you get redwood that you just want to burn. That's just kind of how it goes, especially when you're putting multiple pieces together to make one solid board like we did on this one. 
the grain in redwood can be really hard and really soft so as you're pulling the router through sometimes you'll hit a hard piece of grain and then you try to pull a little bit harder and then you go into a soft piece and it can really be difficult to keep a straight line this one wasn't too bad but there was definitely some difficult areas in this One thing I forgot to mention is that between getting finished with the transfer process and starting to carve, we put two coats of clear over the transfer on the board. The main reason we did that is because as you're carving and your hands and your arms are kind of going across the board, it will smudge. So doing those two coats of clear kind of seals it in there and keeps it from smudging as you're carving. I've done this a few times before and it really sucks because it's hard to see the line after everything's smudged. Something that's easy to forget is that you can move the board on the bench as you're carving. You'll notice that I'm pulling the router towards me so I actually turn the sign just a little bit. It's easier to have control of the router as you're pulling it towards you, especially on the big circle area that's kind of difficult to go left and right. So don't be afraid to move that board around and make it as easy as possible to get a straight line. Once the initial carving was done, then I took that same profile bit and I dropped it down to a quarter of an inch deep and I went back and carved around everything again. Now this goes quite a bit faster than the initial carving because you don't have to be as detail oriented. All you're doing is going around and giving yourself a little bit more room. And even though it is an extra step, it does take a little bit of time, but not much. What it does is it saves you a whole lot of time for your next bit. So the next bit we're going to be using is the quarter inch spiral upcut. And that's a quarter inch all the way down the shank. So you really don't have a whole lot of wiggle room in there, especially when it comes to around the trees and stuff. So you take out a ton of wood with that bit and doing this step really saved me a lot of time so I don't have to get near as close to my carving as I would have had I not done this. Now we're using the quarter inch spiral upcut bit and we're doing this at a quarter of an inch deep. This is the same bit we use to cut shapes. So this particular bit is used for two main things. Number one, it's to give you a flat background or a flat bottom if you want it. And number two is to cut shapes. This thing takes out a ton of wood, but it does it really, really well. It doesn't grab hardly at all. So this is really where doing that last step came into play. You can see that it's taken out a ton of wood and that it's given me that flat background. But up around the trees and all around my carving, I don't have to worry about trying to get in each and every little crevice. I did that with the profile bit. The reason that we use this is because we want a huge contrast between the background and then the outset carving. We could have just used the 90 degree bit but you can only go so deep with that in one time. And we really wanted that 3D look. So we dropped all of this down a quarter of an inch deep. And we could have gone a little bit deeper, but there really wasn't a need to. Now dad's got the spiral up cut in and he dropped it down to about a half of an inch deep. Now if this was not that deep, if we hadn't have gone in with the spiral up cut and dropped everything to a quarter of an inch, dad couldn't just go a half an inch deep. But because we did that, he has to be able to reach back there and get some depth on it. So that's why it's so deep. You can see that dad's going through each individual little area and he's actually like redoing the outline like we did with the profile bit, but he's doing it with this one. So he does the outline around it and then he goes back in and he takes out the remainder of the wood. Sometimes when you're carving something, it's a little bit challenging to kind of see the entire thing. 
So if you take a carving and you do it just piece by piece, like you can see dad did one small piece on the end, then one small piece in between the mountains, it's a little bit easier to kind of get a grasp of the whole thing if you just take it piece by piece. One mistake that I've made in the past is I look at one thing and it gets really overwhelming instead of just carving a little bit here, a little bit there, and taking it as individual pieces of the whole. So that's a little tip for you guys. If you're doing a big project, just think of carving little individual pieces and by the time you're done, the whole thing is really gonna come together. Then we took our 45 degree chamfer bit and we put a small chamfer on the back and then a bigger one on the front. In all reality, we probably should have done this first because I had to dig a splinter out from the edge of this sign and it was not fun. One thing about having a thick piece of wood like this is I really like to see the grain on the edge of the sign or the table or whatever we're doing. So we taped off a couple little small pin holes inside the carving and then we taped off all around the outside so we made sure not to get any overspray on anything. Also, when it comes to doing something with as much depth as this thing has, you wanna make sure to try to get your spray from several different angles so you don't have a bunch of white spots. And the nice thing about Redwood is it does not bleed at all. So even though this had clear on it, we did that for the transfer, not necessarily for this. Redwood won't bleed. So the clear we put on this is just our standard Rust-Oleum clear. It's, it says it's exterior, but I don't really trust it for exterior, but this is gonna be an interior table, so it's not that big a deal. We spent two days putting clear on this thing, letting it dry, sanding it with 220, and then putting more clear on it. So all said and told, this thing has, I would say 12 to 15 coats of clear on it to really protect it and also to give it that deep, dark look. We really searched all over for different table bases. Dad actually ordered one and it just kind of cheapened it. It just was a little bit chintzy looking. So this is a table that dad got off of Amazon for like 60 bucks, I think. And we put it together, centered it, and attached it to the tabletop. It would be really nice if I was a metal worker and I knew how to make this sort of stuff, but I don't. That is definitely not my area of expertise. For most of our tables, we generally try to find something that's cool looking, that's affordable, and that really adds to the table and doesn't take away like the other one we tried. Eventually, we're gonna use inserts and bolts for our tabletops, but we haven't found the right ones yet. So for this one, just like our others, we used inch and a half wood screws and got them hand tight with a screwdriver. One issue we found with making tables is a way to hold the glass in place. So for this one, Dad came up with the idea of cutting these little big feet pieces on the laser. And he put two little holes in there. So what we did is we held them in place with star bond, and then we drilled pilot holes. Once those pilot holes were done, we used three quarter inch nails with the heads painted black, and we attached them that way. And they seem to be holding really, really well. By the way, we had Dave down at Kingman Glass cut this glass for us, and he's done all of our tabletops for us. And he is awesome. Dave, appreciate it, buddy.
Guys, if I haven't said it before, I love the way this little table worked out. I love all the aspects of it. I love the way we carved it deeper than our normal. We didn't do any power carving on this, but I don't feel like we really had to because the, the standard background in that deep, deep area, I just think looks cool. The little feet on the retainers on the edge. I, I love everything about this. I love the base. Uh, this is just maybe one of my favorite projects of the year so far. So we got a lot of uh, cool ideas for tables coming up along with our regular stuff. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found value out of it. If you have any questions, email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com or ryan at makeawoodsign.com. Give us some comments. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.